Before we spend a lot of time talking about the radical halogenation reaction, it's worth spending some time to look at what radicals are and their structure and a little bit about their stability. So radicals are unpaired electrons and they're formed by homolytic bond cleavage. So for example, if we look at HCl, and I'm going to draw this twice. First here on the right, I'm going to draw heterolytic bond cleavage. That's what we typically do, where we move two electrons. So if I move these two electrons in that bond to the chlorine, this is heterolytic bond cleavage. And what we end up with will be those two electrons going to the chlorine, so we get H plus and Cl minus with an extra lone pair. Now back here to the left, if we take HCl and you think about this bond as having two electrons in it, because it does, if we cleave this homolytically, that means we're cleaving it evenly. So I'm going to send one electron to the chlorine and one electron to the hydrogen. Now you've noticed that I'm using a single headed arrow here. This denotes single electron movement. A double headed arrow represents two electron movement. So now if we track what happens here and draw the products, now I've sent one electron to the hydrogen plus one electron to the chlorine. And don't forget the chlorine did have the lone pairs that it started with. You can draw those in if you want. But now each of these atoms has a single unpaired electron or a radical. Now let's draw out the structure of methane. And I'm going to draw all four hydrogen bonds. And in fact, I'll even draw it in its tetrahedral shape. So here's methane. And right now, this carbon is sp3 and tetrahedral. So if you were to take this and heat it up to a high enough temperature, you can actually cleave the CH bond. So that means one electron will go to the hydrogen, one will go to the carbon. When we do this, we get the hydrogen radical or hydrogen atom. Plus, now I just have the carbon with three hydrogens. But now, because we've lost that hydrogen, that fourth group, this is now sp2 and trigonal planar. Additionally, what do we know about sp2 hybridized carbons? There's a p orbital. So I want to put a p orbital on this carbon and put the radical in that p orbital. So a few key points with this. One, you don't count the radical as a group. The radical carbon is sp2 hybridized. That means the geometry at that carbon is trigonal planar. And finally, if you count the electrons around that carbon, we have two in this bond, two in this bond, two in this bond, and one in the radical. There's only seven electrons, meaning it's electron deficient. Now I want you to take a moment and think about something. Is CH4 radical possible? So think about this, draw out the structure, and decide, is this a possible intermediate or a possible molecule? Hopefully you've come up with the answer to be no. Why is that? Well, let's draw out CH4, and I'm not even going to worry about the three-dimensionality, but the carbon has four hydrogen. If we also put a radical on that carbon, count up the electrons. This carbon has nine electrons. That violates carbon's octet. You can't do that. 
Now the methyl radical, which is just CH3 with a radical, that's the one we just looked at, and that is allowed because that doesn't go over carbon's octet. It is electron deficient. It only has seven electrons. Um, also, if you want to calculate the formal charge of this, it's fairly straightforward. Take your group number, carbon's group four, subtract your number of bonds. There's three bonds. Subtract your number of non-bonding electrons. And the radical is the only non-bonding electron. That's one. So the radical has a zero formal charge.